Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland. Titans fans, it is a Football Friday game preview edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. And on today's show, I am going to get you guys ready to go for the Tennessee Titans Week 17 matchup against the Miami Dolphins. We are going to start with my big picture keys to victory on offense and defense. Then we'll zoom in, take a look at some of the players to watch and some of the individual matchups to watch in this game. Finally, we'll close out with my game and score prediction, some fantasy, some gambling, and take a look at the rest of of the AFC over the weekend. So all of that and more on a Football Friday game preview edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. Let's get it! You are Locked On Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Titans fans, it is a Football Friday game preview edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. We're going to start by talking about my big picture keys to victory on offense and defense. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen every day. If this is your first ever listen to the show, make sure you subscribe to the Locked on Titans podcast on whatever podcast platform that you do stream. Also, make sure you check out the podcast on video on the Locked on Titans YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. Smash that notification bell so you know when all of my content goes live. If you're watching on YouTube right now, throw a like on the video. I do greatly appreciate it. Also, make sure you check me out on social media on Twitter, at Tic Tac Titans. You are not going to want to miss all the film clips and film breakdowns that I do on Twitter. And check out the show Facebook page, at Locked on Titans Pod. But with all that housekeeping out of the way, let's dive into this critical Week 17 game preview. The Tennessee Titans taking on the Miami Dolphins. And we'll start with the Titans defense. The defensive game plan, in my mind, is similar to what the Titans did against the Steelers. You got a quarterback who's not really going to beat you deep consistently. You have speedy wide receiver threat, Jalen Waddle, like Deontay Johnson. And you have a team that does not run run the ball very well. So with that in mind, I'm not really a threat in the run game. You're not worried about getting beat deep. Kind of reminds me of what the Titans did against the Steelers. And with that, you have to stop the run. You can't let a team that is not good at running the ball get traction in the ground game. That's the opposite of what the Titans want to let happen. And I know that they're not a good running team. The Dolphins are the 30th best running offense in the NFL. They only average 866 yards per game. So they're not a good running team, but if you allow them to run the ball with success, now you're giving them an element to their offense that they haven't had all year and making it even easier because what the Titans need to do is they need to make the Steelers one-handed on offense, make them go only with the passing game, and it'll get them in third and long situations, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Tua Tungavailoa does not excel when he's got to throw the ball downfield. So if you get the Dolphins in third and eight, third and 10, third and 12 consistently, well, it's going to put their offense in a really, really tough spot. And speaking of that, so you stop the run, but after that, I want to see a lot of cover two in this game, whether it be traditional cover two with two high safeties playing deep halves, whether it be invert cover two, where the Titans take one of their safeties, bring them down right into the middle of the field, and then take a cornerback back into the other deep half along with the second safety. Whatever they have to do, whether it's traditional cover two, Tampa two, or cover two invert, I don't care. I want to see a ton of cover two. And my thought process behind that is the Titans have to cover the middle and intermediate areas of the field. Like I said, Tua is not going to be a guy who beats you deep consistently. He wants to throw the ball short, and he wants to throw the ball over the middle. So how do you take away the middle of the field? You put three zone defenders in the middle, the two linebackers, and then the dropping safety, or whether it be the slot cornerback, the linebacker, and then the other linebacker taking the, the honey hole and cover two. Either way, you want to put three guys covering the intermediate middle of the field. And then with the cover two, you have two guys who are going to be playing outside but underneath, whether it be, you know, to the sticks at 10 yards or in the flats. So now you have the short and outside covered where they like to throw off dump passes to running backs, tight ends, and waddle. And you have the intermediate middle of the field covered 
covered with three defenders. So you're covering your bases. If the Titans try to come out and run the cover three, cover four, man stuff like they normally do on early downs, it's going to play into the hand of the Miami Dolphins. Think about how San Francisco attacked in the first half. They were really taking advantage of the fact that the Titans play cover three and cover four. And when you do that, that means your outside cornerbacks have deep responsibilities, which means they can't give as much attention to the up front to the short underneath type routes. And that's where Miami is going to go. Two is not going to beat you deep. I'm going to throw up a visual aid right now for the YouTube crowd so that everybody can check out Tua's throw chart in terms of down and distance. Look at how much he operates 10 yards or shorter. Passes that go less than 10 yards make up 74% of the completions for Tua. He does not want to throw the ball t- past 10 yards down the field. And when you just look at the middle of the field in between the hashes, that's responsible for 45% of Tua's completions. So he wants to throw the ball over the middle of the field, preferably 10 yards or shorter, or he wants to throw it out to the outsides, but still 10 yards or shorter. A great representation of that on the YouTube feed right now if you guys want to go check that out. So Tua does not want to throw it deep. You stop the run, put the Dolphins in third and long situations. You play cover two, so that you're, you're putting the majority of your attention to the intermediate outsides and the intermediate middle, and then you stop the Dolphins' offense. So that's what I want to see from the Titans' defense. Stop the run, play a lot of cover two when you get the Dolphins in third downs. On offense, they have to handle the pressure packages of the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have the second highest blitz rate in the NFL at 39%. They also have the most sacks in the NFL at 45 I know the Titans don't run these plays well, but they're really going to need to capitalize on screen passes, on quick hitting slant routes and smoke routes to the wide receivers outside. you got to watch out for Jerome Baker and Jones at safety. Brandon Jones at safety, they are blitzers for this defense. They're not regular linebackers and regular safeties. They are blitzers for this team. And if you've watched the Dolphins at all during this seven-game winning streak, then you have seen them. They just crowd the line of scrimmage. They put their five defensive backs, and they bring safeties. They bring linebackers. They bring everybody. Ton of pressure packages, and the Titans have struggled with those, so they better have a good plan of how to deal with that. Not only how to deal with the pressure, but how to get the ball out quickly and create yards after catch situations. Also, the Titans have to run the football. With the Dolphins loving those pressure concepts and those pressure packages and being such a sack-heavy team, having the most sacks in the NFL, that means if the Titans are in third and long, situations consistently throughout the day. The Dolphins' pass rush can pin their ears back. They can be more creative with what they do on defense. The Titans can't allow that to happen. They have to get back to running the ball. Miami's defense is the seventh best run defense in the NFL, only allowing 102 rushing yards per game. The Titans have to beat that average, get back to doing what they do best, which is going to be running the football like they did against New England, like they did against Pittsburgh. The Titans have to stay out of third and long, and I think that the way that they need to focus the run game, The Titans need to attack on the perimeter. The Dolphins are going to cram the middle. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. The Titans have to find a way to get on the perimeter like San Francisco did against them in the the first half last week. That means perimeter runs like pitches, like pools, like sweeps. You need to have tight ends and wide receivers acting as lead blockers, getting out on the perimeter and around the edge to lead for a guy like Dontrell Hilliard, who I think might have a bigger role than he's had in the last few weeks. But we're going to talk about some of the individual players and individual matchups that I am watching in this game. Before we zoom into that, though, do want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bars in the galaxy from our friends over at Built Bar. It's the new year, so that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, you have to check out Built Bars. And here's the thing about Built Bar. It's not like a regular protein bar. It tastes more like a candy bar. They're not chalky. They're not waxy. They're not tough to choke down. They're soft. They're delicious. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. And I've talked a lot about the taste, but that health factor as well. They're low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber. Here's an idea for the new year. Go to all your secret treat stashes at home, in the pantry, at the office, in the car, wherever. Throw out all that sugary junk and replace them with built Bars. You are doing yourself a favor. Make sure you go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you're going to get 15% off your order. Once again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at builtbar.com. Titans! 
Saints fans, let's continue this Football Friday Game Preview Edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. I just talked about my keys to victory on offense and defense for the defense. Stop the run, play cover two in third down situations on offense, handle the pressure packages, run the football. Now, generally speaking, as an overall team thing, the Titans have to watch the turnovers. The Dolphins are minus five in the turnover battle in their losses. They're plus four in their wins. This could be a low-scoring game, so with that in mind, Keeping the ball in your hands will be key for the Titans, and they put an extra emphasis on that during practice this week as well. But we're going to dive into the individual matchups that I'm watching, the individual players that I will be looking for and having a a spotlight on in this game. We'll start on offense. Number one, A.J. Brown has to dominate, and it's going to be much tougher to dominate this week than it was last week against the San Francisco 49ers' terrible set of cornerbacks. The Dolphins have good cornerbacks who are big and physical. Byron Murphy, Xavier Howard, excellent. So what I would do personally is I would try to get A.J. Brown in the slot as much as possible, going up against a guy like Nick Needman, uh, going up against a safety, maybe a linebacker. Don't have A.J. Brown going one-on-one against these outside cornerbacks all day long. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. And especially when you consider what the Dolphins do on defense. So if you watch that Baltimore game, the Dolphins literally put seven guys at the line of scrimmage, six guys at the line of scrimmage every single time. They had their cornerbacks and their safeties about 10 yards deep, and they said, okay, go ahead and throw a quick dump pass. We trust our defensive backs to get up on you and stop you before you make a big play. Well, guess what? A.J. Brown is a better yards after catch option and a better wide receiver than anybody they got in Baltimore. So if the Dolphins try to go with that approach against the Titans, quick dump off passes, quick slants to A.J. Brown, and he's got to make them pay. So A.J. Brown had a great game last week. He's going to have to do even more in this game. A.J. missed Thursday's practice, but all reports coming from national media are It was just a maintenance day. It was just a rest day. Not COVID, not anything like that. A.J. Brown's on track to play on Sunday, and by God, the Titans will need him. So put A.J. in the slot, hit him on some quick slants, some quick routes, and create those yards after catch situations against a pressure-heavy Dolphins defense. Also on offense, I'm looking at the two backup running backs, Dontrell Hilliard and Jeremy McNichols. Not only because they're going to have to be used on those perimeter runs that I want the Titans offense to focus on, but also because they're going to have to pick up blitzes and pass protection. Having the tight end stay in, having the back stay in, and pick up those blitz, uh, those blitz packages, pick up those pressure concepts. The running backs are going to be critical for the Titans to do that. Jeremy McNichols is going to have to be huge there and get a little chip, dip out into the flat. With the way the Dolphins play defense, those could create some big yards for the Titans. So you're going to need a big, big week from your pass-catching scat backs and Dontrell Hilliard and Jeremy McNichols. Uh, Dontrell Hilliard had uh, 13 yards, 49 yards, 20 yards on 20 carries in his last three games. I think Hilliard needs to get 10 to 15 carries in this game. And like I said, really focus on those outside perimeter runs where you have a pulling Tennessee Titan, whether it be an offensive lineman, more likely being a tight end, or another wide receiver the Titans use Nick Westbrook Aquina, Cody Hollister, Racing McMath in this way where they put them in motion and have them go across the formation and then they're essentially the fullback as the lead blocker going across on a perimeter run. Need to see a lot of that. So Hilliard, McNichols, A.J. Brown have to be the primary targets for the Titans in this game. Moving to the defensive side of the ball, matchups in the passing game. Dane Crookshank against Mike Gusecki. That's going to be... A big one. Gasecki is a safety blanket for Tua. He gets it to him all the time. He's just a glorified wide receiver. He's like the best version of Anthony Ferkser you're going to get in the NFL. That's what you're getting with Mike Gasecki. He's not going to block. He's not going to be physical, but he's fast. He's big. He's a matchup nightmare. But Dane Crookshank has been the tight end stopper, and he's going to have to continue that on Sunday. I feel confident in Crookshank to handle that responsibility. And then Jalen Waddle. That is an everybody job. I put Jalen Waddle versus everybody. Because like Kyle Krabs talked about in our crossover Thursday, yesterday, the, the Dolphins don't just line Jalen Waddle up in the slot and say, hey, go to town. They use him outside. They use him in the slot. But more importantly, 
like Kyle pointed out, they have been using Jalen Waddle in motion. They've been lining him up in the backfield and running him out as a running back. They've been bringing him in jet motion around the formation and throwing quick passes to him. They've been throwing little running back swings to him. They have been lining him up not only as a wide receiver, but everywhere on the offense. And everyone is going to have to keep their eyes on Waddle. He is truly their only game-breaking talent that the Dolphins have on offense. It will be an everybody job trying to slow down Jalen Waddle, getting to the ball, swarming him, tackling him, getting him on the ground. Like we talked about in the first segment, Tua's not going to throw the ball down the field to Jalen Waddle. He's getting it to him in short and intermediate areas. And then Jalen Waddle is using his world-class speed. I mean, he is probably a top three speed guy in the NFL already as a rookie. So, you got to make sure you swarm to the ball and, and get him down on the ground and don't let him create those yards after catch situations. So those two are kind of together, pass catching matchups that I am ready to see. And then finally, the last thing that I have on the Titans defense is the Titans edge rushers against the offensive tackles of the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins offensive tackles are awful. Uh, Liam Eckenberg, um, Jared Davis, uh, they're not good. There's no other way. Well, maybe they end up being good, but they haven't been good this year. It's Jesse Davis, not Jared Davis. 55 pressures from Eichenberg. 56 pressures from Davis. That's 46% of the total pressures allowed by the Dolphins coming from just those two guys. Nine sacks from Eckenberg. Seven sacks from Davis. That's 46% of the team's total sacks. 16, just those two guys. So Harold Landry... Hopefully, Bud Dupree is activated off the COVID list. It is possible. Those two guys have to wreck shop. And if if for some reason Bud Dupree can't make it, then it's Ola Daney who's going to have to step in. Derek Roberson who's going to have to step in. Those guys have to win their battles against those offensive tackles consistently throughout the day so that the Titans can get the pressure on Tua that they need because Tua will throw interceptions. He's thrown 11 on the year. I do believe the Dolphins are also one of the teams who fumble the ball the most. They have 25 fumbles on the year. I think that's number one in the NFL, if not number two. So the Titans can create turnovers if they win those battles on the edges and put pressure on Tua to make mistakes. So those are my individual matchups and individual players to watch. A.J. Brown against the cornerbacks of the Miami Dolphins, Dontrell Hilliard and Jeremy McNichols as pass blockers against the pressure, but also leaking out of the backfield and running on perimeter runs. Dan Crookshank against Mike Gusecki, Jalen Waddle against everybody, and then the Titans edge rushers against the Dolphins offensive tackles. But I'm going to move into my game and score prediction. We'll also talk some gambling. We'll talk some fantasy, and I'll go over the Titans rooting interest in week 17. Before we get into that, though, do want to tell you guys about betonline.ag. Betonline.ag has you covered this holiday season for all the latest props, odds, and lines. They have everything you need to have the best time possible during this football uh, portion of the year where we get the playoffs in college football. It's bowl season. You get the playoffs in the NFL, but it's not just football. They have pro and college basketball, they have NHL, they have boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to betonline.ag today and make sure that you don't wait to take advantage of all their amazing offers. When you do sign up and use the promo code Locked On, you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So once again, that's promo code Locked On at betonline.ag for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Titans fans, let's cap off this Football Friday Game Preview Edition of the Locked On Titans podcast. We're going to talk my game and score prediction. We're going to talk fantasy. We're going to talk gambling and the Titans rooting interest in the AFC over the weekend. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys again for making the Locked On Titans podcast your first listen every day. As for that second listen, make sure you check out the Locked On Bets podcast. I just told you where to go to place your bets. Now, I'm going to tell you where to go to get the best gambling advice possible, and that is the Locked On Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Going to give you daily picks, upset specials, Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Check out the Locked On Bets podcast presented by betonline.ag wherever you get your podcast. So we are going to start with my game and score prediction. I felt a little weird about this game. I didn't really know 
how to go with it. So, like I said, I think the game plan in the situation is very similar to the Steelers. Um, and the Titans were winning 13-3 to at halftime and should have crushed the Steelers like 20-3. to Mike Vrabel 7-0 and with extra preparation in season. Danger, but I'm doing it. Tennessee Titans, 22-9. I don't even think the Dolphins score a touchdown in this game. I think they get three field goals. Jason Sanders is really good. But I am taking the Titans 20-9 in this game. I think they do win. The Titans are three-and-a-half point favorites in this game. I'm taking that. I would bet that. Also, the over-under is 39.5, and, and I know that my score is 10 points lower than the set over-under, so you're like, well, duh, you're going to take the under then. And If I had to lean, I would, but over-unders are just weird. I could see these teams both getting 20 points. I mean, that's not insane, right? So, for me, I don't like touching over-unders unless I feel really good about it. Now, if I could get a tease going here uh, to tease the over-under up and down with the line, I'd probably look into that, but for my money... And where I feel safe, I'd take the line for the Titans three and a half, but I would not touch the over-under. So 20 to 9, Tennessee Titans win and clinch the AFC South. That's my gambling. That's my prediction. As for fantasy, I would consider playing Ryan Tannehill in this game. I'm definitely playing A.J. Brown in this game. And if I'm looking for a, uh, a, a cheap daily fantasy option at flex, Dontrell Hilliard, like I said, I think he's going to have a, a big a big game for the Titans. I think he's going to have a, a big role for the Titans. They're going to need to use perimeter runs and get him out to use his speed on the outside. I think that's going to be a focus. So Dontrell Hilliard, I think, could have a big game for the Titans as a low-end, low-cost flex option. If you don't like Dontrell Hilliard, Jeremy McNichols in that same vein. Now, I think McNichols would have the better game if the Titans lose. But I'm betting that the Titans win, so I'm going with Dontrell Hilliard. Now let's take a look at the Tennessee Titans' rooting interest this week. The Raiders are at the Colts. The Colts are six-and-a-half-point favorites in the game. Obviously, the Titans are rooting for the Raiders. If, in fact, the Titans lose to the Dolphins and the Raiders beat the Colts, the Titans still wrap up the AFC South. I don't want it to be that way, but by hook or by crook, folks, I want the Titans to get a home playoff game. So if they got to back into it, I'll take that over playing on the road on Wild Card Weekend and seeding the division to the Colts. Don't want to see that one way or another. Kansas City playing at Cincinnati. Now, this is a big game to watch. Cincinnati is a five-and-a-half-point underdog at home. If Cincy coming off a huge offensive explosion last week against the Ravens, if Cincy can win that game at home and the Titans win, the Tennessee Titans are the number one seed in the AFC with a game against the Houston Texans and a potential return from Derrick Henry in front of them to clinch it in Week 18. That would be a great spot for the Titans. And the Titans have had a chance to do this a few weeks now, and they've, they've blundered it. So the Titans, you know, against the Steelers, they could have done it. They didn't. Against the Texans, they could have done it. They didn't. Against the Patriots, they could have done it. They didn't. Here's another chance. They need a little bit of help, but they got to take care of their business first. The Rams are at the Baltimore Ravens, and the Ravens are three-and-a-half-point home underdogs. Lamar Jackson's probably not going to play in this game, but here's my thought process, guys. I want the Rams to win this game because I don't want Baltimore to slip into the back end of the playoffs and be the number seven seed and then get a healthy Lamar Jackson back to take on the Titans. Just not the matchup that I want. I'd rather play the Dolphins. I'd rather play even the Chargers, really. I'd rather play the Broncos and even the Patriots. I'd rather play over playing the Ravens, even with all their injuries and all their unfortunateness. They're a well-coached team. They have a superstar quarterback in Lamar Jackson when he's healthy. So don't want to play the Ravens. The rivalry, things will get weird. Want to avoid that. And then Denver plays at the Chargers. And for similar reasons, we want Denver to win that game because I would rather play Denver. I would rather play Miami. I would rather play Oakland or Las Vegas if they win than play the Chargers, or the Ravens. Those are two teams that I don't want to see in that matchup because they have really good quarterbacks. Uh, but I'll take uh, the Chargers over Baltimore. But either way, that's how I see things going. Uh, so that's that. As for the injuries, the Titans are actually in a pretty good spot. They were able to activate uh, Nate Davis off the COVID list on Thursday. So Julio Jones, Bud Dupree, Danico Autry, Nick Westbrook-Akina, Buster Screen, all still on there as important players for the Titans. But 
on Friday, the Titans could potentially get back Bud Dupree, Julio Jones. On Saturday, the Titans could potentially get back to Nico Autry. So that five-day window that they have to wait if they're asymptomatic will pass. So it's possible that the Titans get all those guys back for the game. And boy, do they need them, especially a guy like Bud Dupree. I talked about how much the Titans need uh, to win on the edges. Bud Dupree gave Trent Williams, who I think is the best left tackle in the NFL, Bud Dupree gave Trent Williams problems last week. What do you think he's going to do to Liam Eichenberg? <laughs> Come on, Bud. It's time. So hopefully the Titans are able to get those guys back. More importantly than anything, hopefully those dudes are healthy and dealing with it because a lot of players are coming out in the NFL and saying Taylor Heineke said that he could barely walk up and down the stairs. Tyler Lockett said he really thought he was going to die for a couple of times because of the shortness of breath, the fatigue, the headaches, everything. So, you know, I know that these NFL players are the best athletes in the world. They're probably as healthy as any people can be in the world, but that doesn't mean that they're immune and they're all going to be asymptomatic and they're all going to be just fine. So let's still, number one, hope that these Tennessee Titans players on the COVID list are healthy. And then going forward from there, let's hope they can get back and play on Sunday. So that is going to do it. For my Football Friday game preview of the Tennessee Titans game against the Miami Dolphins, Week 17 through 2021, I'm going to be back with you guys on Sunday. I'll be back with you guys next year to break down everything that happened. Hope you guys all have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Don't be crazy out there, all right? Ring the new year in responsibly. Be smart. Get home safe. All of that. Thank you all so much for another awesome year on the Locked on Titan podcast. Hopefully, I'll be back with you guys on Sunday night for a Victory Monday podcast. But that's going to do it for me today. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and this was Locked on Titan.